favorite fan films. So let me find out from you guys. Because, I, I mean, you know, you, in, in amongst my research, I mean, you guys just, like, know so much about the fan film stuff already. And I don't actually know. What, what are your favorite films? Man, I mean, I guess I would go, I would go kind of old school, I guess. And then I'd go with Green Goblin's Last Stand and probably, like, uh, Star Wars Dark Redemption. Uh, man, there's, there's so many. I'd say the one that I watched like a gazillion times when it first came out was Grayson. I just kept watching it over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. And Dead End. And I don't know. It's hard for me to kind of just like pinpoint a certain film or films that I consider my favorite, really. I mean, I don't know. There's so many good ones, you know? Have there's you seen... So many, um, there's so many good ones. Did you see Ascension? That's a really good... That's a recent, probably, favorite. That's one of the first interviews that we did. Yeah, it's a Tomb Raider fan film. And it was done by... Um, Wait, yeah, of course I know that yeah. one. No, I wrote a rave review about it. <laughs> that is, I'd say, you know, a step up, definitely, in the fan. We spoke to them on our show. Yeah. They were our first guests, actually. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I didn't discover that one until this, this summer, and I was just blown yep. away when I watched that it. That was a really good one. Uh, I mean, you know, with, with all due respect to um, the folks behind uh, uh, the, the one... What was the one they named? The, uh, Tears of the Dragon. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it, with all due respect to them, uh, you know, this the Ascension just blew everybody yeah. out. I mean, it, it, heck, it blew the feature films out of the water. It yeah. was yeah. It's such a good movie. I mean, it's a movie movie. You know, I mean, like the first half hour, nothing happens. They just kind of talk and they trust you that uh, that you'll stick with the, the characters, that, you know, that the actors can actually carry a real movie. That's the and thing. In the second half hour, they bring it. Everything blows yeah. up, fist fights, guns. And, and it's like, you know, I mean, and, but you're not sitting there going, God, I, I can't wait for something to happen. You know, when it, when it shows up, it all happens organically out of the story. It's such a good flick. And he's yeah, talking he's about doing like a, a Batman or a Batgirl kind of fan film uh, he mentioned. So I'd like to I hope he brings that out or works on that a little more. That'd be cool. cool. They were cool people to talk to, too. Yeah, they were very nice. See, now now when, when we go out phone, I'm going to have to go back and... Uh, Download that podcast. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. That's, that was our that was one of our experimental yeah. shows where we we're kind of like just, just just getting our feet wet, you know. I, I think one of my favorite one is Reign of the Fallen. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, Star Star Wars fan film. Rain yeah, and it's like this fifty minute movie, and it, it's like, what if like somebody on the IFC channel decided to make a Star Wars fan film? Because like, there's like nothing happening on it. It's like beautifully, beautifully shot. The, the guys who made it are, like, the nicest folks, too. They're, like, from deep in New Jersey. And um, they came up to one of my fan film talks at um, ICON, which is a, the big science fiction convention here on Long Island. And uh, they're just, like, the, the mellowest dudes. And you would never expect them to all be, like, even know each other because, like, the, the, the director of it is, is like, the, this, like, really quiet, soft-spoken guy. And then, you know, the, the, the main actor and is, like, this this big broad shoulder jock dude type and it's like how do these two guys even know each other and yet they made such a great movie it's so much fun to watch I, I, I know what you mean about it's, it's difficult to have a favorite because I mean yeah, there, there's so many different ways that you can look at them like oh you know a favorite long one or a favorite short one or your favorite comic exactly serious one favorite yeah. horror favorite you know superhero favorite you know yeah. sci-fi Star Wars Star Trek like, like really goofy ones uh, I think, like, for me, like, A Message from Batman is probably my all-time favorite, just because it, it's so simple. It's just, you know, the guy in a wetsuit and a Batman mask, and he doesn't care that, you know, he has these jowly cheeks and a beard, and he, and he just starts going off on, on basically how stupid, uh, if you think about it, how stupid the Batman mythos is, but it's just funny as hell. No, I haven't seen that one. Robin's Big Day is good. Have you ever seen that one? Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> and Batman comes and totally ruins and cock blocks Robin on this date. And I can't believe it. Like, you know, they, they got, like, name brand actors, too. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah. Because I, I, I was, when you said that, I started thinking, I mean, I was thinking of the same movie, but I was also thinking of this one that came out of um, Arizona over the summer, um, Batman's Bad Day. Batman's Bad Day. No. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, it is funny as hell. You're going to like this. It's, it's uh, Batman hanging out in uh, the Hall of Justice with Superman, Wonder Woman, a Green Lantern, and Flash. And they all basically just start ranking up Batman about how he doesn't have any superpowers. And it is, it, it's, it's only like about four or five minutes long. It's, um, you can find it at greenlist.com, I believe it is, because the guy calls himself Greenlist Pictures. Okay. And okay. it's funny as hell. Right. That's kind of like Batman's going to get shot in the face. Have you yeah. seen that one? I, you know, that's like a legendary one, and I've never gotten around to yeah. seeing it. 
Oh, you have to. It's, it's hilarious. And their follow-up is coming uh, another month yep. or so. We'll the be talking to them next. The film ever made. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. The guy, that guy emailed me. I have to get back to him someday. Larry well, Longstaff. We're going to have him on the show, right? Chris? Yep. Uh, on December 4th, we're going to have okay. um, three gentlemen on. The the guy. Um, the animator. Yep. He'll be on there. Director. And then that, the other two guys, were they just the writers or director, like you said, I guess? I've been, I've been talking to Larry for years, ever since, yeah. you know, I bought paper cuts. Have you guys ever seen that? It's kind of like a, it's kind of almost like a, I would call it kind of a, an SNL-y style fan film thing. It's a, it's a bunch of different segments. One is like a Hobbit takeoff, like making fun of the Hobbit, and there's a Spider-Man moment that's hilarious. Like, this guy jumps from like a, you know, a parking lot, uh, a second story parking lot uh, facility or whatever, and he lands, he's wearing this terrible costume. It's just like this hokey, terrible super like Spider Man costume. Like he spins his web and like somebody throws a straight on the guy. It's just so bad. <laughs> it's, it's meant to be. It's hilarious. So yeah, you check that one out. I thought paper cuts is pretty funny. Yeah, it, it's it's always interesting how people, you know, sometimes use the the fan film aesthetic to you know their advantage just to make fun of the fact like yeah this is like ultra low budget so you know and, and instead of apologizing for it they just kind of have fun with it. You know, like, that was complete horseshit, but I don't care. You buy your ticket, either you, you sign, you, either you take the ride or you get off the ride, you know? But well, like Colonel O'Brien always says when he's having a bad monologue, he always says, hey, when somebody's heckling him, he goes, the show is free. <laughs> you know, what do you want from me? It's so true. Did you see, did you guys see, um, I think we talked about this before, uh, Amboy, will you see Be Kind, Rewind, about uh, the video yeah, store? Yeah, the Jack Black movie. Yeah. Did you see that, Clive? No, I, you you know, got to check I, that out. I actually didn't get around to it. I keep meaning around it. You know, I, I managed to fit uh, Sunny. You know, I have a three-year-old, so I just don't right. get out to the movies as much as I would like. Uh, I, I did catch Son of Rambo, but, which is... That was great. Yeah, I saw that not too long yeah, ago. A movie that came out this past spring. Yeah. That's right. And I'm looking forward to Fanboys, which, you know, that, that started out originally as a fan film. Yeah, I remember seeing that and being like, hey, and like I was in the theater and I saw the preview and I said... Wait a minute! Like I, I was like I was thinking about this, like writing an article on this in Family Theater like a long, long time ago. Now, why aren't they releasing it? I wasn't sure where it was going to go. So why aren't they releasing it? It was supposed to be released and they never did. Is there politics oh, behind yeah, that? It was supposed to come out like two years ago. Yeah, yeah MySpace page and everything. Huh. It, it 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 keeps not testing very well. Is basically, and then they uh, they changed the plot. They took out a, a whole cancer subplot. Oh, um, that got all the, the um, Star Wars costuming guys, the five oh the five oh first Legion, upset because they had all donated their time because they they thought it was such a noble story, and then they take out the cancer plot, and they all got upset. There were protests and, and whatnot, protesting over over a movie about Star Wars fans, kind of yeah. mind boggles. I don't know, yeah. but anyway, yeah, what they say is coming out in in February now. Okay, so I. I I see that very much as, as a movie I will not talk my wife into being able to go see <laughs> and have to watch a preview. I, I can't think I don't not sure I would want to see it myself, but I don't know. We'll see. Kind of going off topic, do you guys see um, a film called Trekkies by any chance? Oh, yeah. I got one and two downstairs. I have never seen it, but I really want to see it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Give me my boy! Happy birthday! We've been having this party now for years. It seems like every year it gets to be a little bit more fun. A couple more people come, and, you know, it started off small, and now the younger people are coming, and this year we had a girl come and everything. So, you know, I just foresee it going on and on. I heard it's pretty funny, like, there's a, a guy, like, you know, like, a guy comes in, he's like, Mom, leave me alone, I'm doing an interview. Interesting enough. Yeah, and, and that guy went on to be, like, a, I mean, years later, he turned out to be, like, a special effects guy for Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> it's like, yeah, hey, take yeah. that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, the, uh, one of the people that I interviewed for the book in the final chapter is uh, this professor, and let me look in the book, because I'm going to mispronounce his last name, and then he'll be ticked off me. Uh, Daryl, he's this professor at this community college out in uh, California, and he actually is in Trekkies um, as this guy. He's, he's this guy who um, dresses up his cat in Star Trek uniforms and goes to conventions. And so now he teaches a whole course on like the sociology of Star Trek and stuff. But there's actually a fan film on Trekkies too. There's actually a fan film on there. 
Uh, There's a lot of fan films uh, that they interview people. There's like one in Minneapolis where it's like Star Trek at the old in the old west. Or something. That's it. The actual film is like a Easter egg or an extra on the really? DVD. Yeah. I've got to see now. There's another thing. If you want to go, through. Mm -hmm. we should never have done the podcast. We should have just got on the phone and bullshit. Right? You're just geeky. Oh, right. crazy. <laughs> no way. I didn't know about that. See, now we have an audience listening to us geek out. That's, good, man. that's how. That's how these always go. We're always like in the beginning. We're kind of. Um, um. <laughs> and I wear my geekiness like a badge of honor. I don't care. Uh, and supposedly, well. Trekkies Three is supposed to be about um, the Star Trek fan films. If that ever happens, really? yeah. If you go to the Trekkies website, Trekkies website, I do believe they mention that on there. Uh, there we go, Daryl Frazetti. Yeah. F R A Z E T T I. He does this whole thing about the anthropology of Star Trek, and now he's doing one about um, anthropology of Star Wars as well, because he kind of uses them as ways to get students comfortable with the idea of talking about racism and economic differences and stuff without. You know, making people feel like, oh, well, I can't say this or that with that, because, you know, if you're talking about Betazoids instead of, like, you know, uh, people you know, it's a lot easier to talk about. No. Yeah. And when Star Trek first came out, it, it, you know, it tackled a lot of controversial topics and issues. Sure. You know, so it, it was a good vehicle for that. And, and that, you know, I mean, folks like the, the folks behind Hidden Frontier and stuff, they, um, I mean, they kind of went back to that when, when they started coming out, because, like, they took up the, the stories of, about, like, uh, post-traumatic stress from war mm -hmm. and um, gay couples and stuff. Is play, you know, right. The, you know, the real Star Trek shows would, would never dive into now. And now, um, what, Star Trek Phase 2, the new Voyagers guys, they're, they have one that's coming out in December. Which yeah, I saw that. It's the, uh, the, the two uh, officers that are gay officers. So, yeah, it's all, you know, all based on the, the age crisis and stuff. Um, I, I got to finally briefly meet... Um, James Cauley, the, the guy who plays Kirk on, on that over this past weekend at New England Fan Experience. So was, was, yeah, I was actually going to ask you to get in, get into that. Uh, talk about the whole New England uh, Fan Experience. It was, it was interesting. It, it's like five different conventions all going on at once in, in this ludicrously expensive hotel in the middle of Boston. Um, the kind of place where like the oatmeal was four dollars. Oh man! <laughs> they do like science fiction and science and anime and. I forget with pop culture in general, and then one other track as well. But it's basically like five little conventions all going on at once. But all it, it, the main thing was that it was anime. It, it's like it was fourteen-year-old girls dressed up like I, I don't know, like Sailor Moon claws or something. Jeez, oh, stab me now! Weird dances to J-pop. It was. Um, I'm showing my age. I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> walk right now because I'm going <laughs> to get off my water. So it was irritating. Yeah. But, you know, it, at the same time, I mean, what, what I was into when I was that age, I mean, I suppose I would have been into it, into it just as much as they were into their stuff. So I guess I really can't point fingers. But, uh, yeah, it made for an interesting convention because you have all this anime stuff going on and, you know, kids with, with like, the, the styrofoam pointy hair painted red going out, like, five yeah. years ahead. And then you have, like, all these, like, aged Doctor Who fans, you know, watching. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you guys doing here? It was speaking like speaking of shows, has this show ever been good? I don't know. I guess the new ones are supposed to be one. Oh, wait, Doctor Who? I never got that show. I I, I, never, I mean, I used to like the old one. I don't know. I don't know if he was the original Doctor Who, but he was the guy with the curly hair and the star. Tom Baker. Oh, Tom Baker, yeah. yeah. No, he was, like, he was the one I got introduced to in the in the eighties when I was a kid. I heard that weird theme song come on. Yeah, and I was like, "What the hell is this song?" <laughs> behind the scenes 
everything that, and I was like, wow, this sounds so cool. They have aliens and explosions and special effects. And so I, I didn't see this thing for like another five years, but I'd read all about it. And then I finally got to see it. I'm like, oh my God, you know, that, that, that spaceship looks like it's made out of a shoebox. <laughs> and it was like, I, I just, they lost me right there, and I just never really yeah, came back. He's traveling around a phone booth. And, and now apparently it's, uh, now apparently it's, it's you know, I'm told the new one is, is phenomenal. But yeah. I just never got around to watching yeah. it. Same thing with Battlestar Galactica. I never really got into yeah. Battlestar Galactica. Entertainment Weekly, every single week, raves about what an incredible show it was, and that the new one is, and, and uh, I never got around to watching it. Me either. Like, I'm, just, like, I'm so used to the old, old one with them wearing the King Tut helmets, you know? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I was old school. Moffat or whatever that, that you know, monkey, yeah. like a teddy bear exactly. costume was. <laughs> what the hell has that been about? And, like, dude, I mean, even, even at, like, what, 10 years old, I knew this was incredibly lame. So I, yeah. Now you're, you're wounding me. You're hurting me, Clive. In the foot and then reloading and shooting my other foot. So far, I've put down most of Star Trek. I've put down Doctor Who. I've put down... Uh, you <laughs> bastard. It's all over, man. This book is... Hey, wait, let's cancel the whole damn thing. Right? <laughs> I'm going to edit right everything. Extra editing skills, Chris. <laughs> uh, I didn't see any of it. I was drunk. I was over at Sandboy Will's house. He got me blasted. That's right. That's right. I, I'm told the new BSG is really good. I'm sure if I actually had the free time to sit down and watch it, like I mentioned, I have a three-year-old. Um, yeah. I would probably really dig it. It's just too uh, dark and angst. Maybe. I don't know. It's a little too dark for your taste, right, Chris? Like, uh, yeah, I, I, I tried this, the uh, when they did the miniseries, and I just... I didn't like it. Maybe I'm too inflexible and old school, but I like the original one. I heard it's a lot of politics, so I'd probably actually get into that side. Of yeah. This is everything. Why is everything got to be so goddamn dark? I mean, that's like the big thing now. Heroes is all dark. I love Heroes, but it's all yeah, dark. And, and, yeah. Heroes has gotten really good again, but nobody's watching it now because at right. this point, the you know, season two is so awful. But yeah, I mean, you know, yesterday's was phenomenal. I, uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, wow, they really stepped it up. I don't right, talk about that. I got, I got to put the phone down. I haven't seen any of this season. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> so this is exactly what happened. Yep. So-and-so died. What I want to know is, here, to, to geek out and go way off topic on that, where are these Night nice Wonder comic books coming from, being that the guy who made them died two seasons ago? Right. Exactly. From the future, I don't know. That. Maybe we're supposed to. And why does Mr. Petrelli sketch just like Tim Sale? You know, it's fuck. It, it, you know, you hire one artist, he's, he's good enough to do the whole. You, you think Tim Sale could come up with a different style for him? I know, right? But he can at least get. Hey, it. Alex Ross, you paint on these rock stores? Yeah, I'm gonna, like we have one of them do like um, just stick figures. Do like <laughs> the Mary version, you know? Like, like who the hell is that guy supposed to be? Is that the Haitian? Who the hell is that? <laughs> Who's gonna die? Is it me? I hope it isn't me. I, I don't know. That, that, he has pointy hair. That, gee, that narrows it down to about eight of our characters. It's stick figure. It could be anybody. We're all a, we're all a doom and risk. It's the whole show. Everybody all paranoid. Like I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh God, we're all gonna die. Save yourself. Oh boy. Sorry, we're ruining the whole thing for you, Chris. That's all right. <laughs> I didn't want to watch it anyway. Chris, man, you need to catch up. Come on, dude. I just like to sit down with the entire season and, you know, spend a week or so and go through it. I can't stand you know, going week per week per week. Some shows are good like that. Like like 24, the first season that I saw in box set, and, and I was like, man, how could anybody about watch this week to week? Yeah. Arrested Development, another really good one to do that. I haven't week. seen that one. Just sit there like, oh, I'm just going to watch one. And then it's like, it's like crack, like five hours. <laughs> it's so good. You're like, oh, man. It's like one thirty in the morning, I got to get to sleep. So I, I noticed, um, I actually, go ahead, go ahead. No, you, no, you. I'm sorry, dude. No, go ahead. You, no, you, you, hey, you. Hey, hey, you. You, you're good, you. Hey, hey, the hair, <laughs> you. You, you're good, you. No, go ahead. How's my hair? How's my hair? <laughs> um... I was actually going to ask you, uh, at the, at the, you said at the, uh, the New England uh, fan experience, uh, you actually talked about the film Superman, the Super 8 movie. Ah, uh, yeah. Can we talk a little bit about that and if, you, if it might surface anytime soon? It's supposed to be surfacing sometime in early to mid-December. They're really close. Mark Kimball, the guy who made it, um, that's actually one of the stories in the book, too. It's in the, the Sandy Clora chapter that IO9 wrote about. 
Um, Mark Kimball in 1980 was a college student, and, and he made a Super 8 movie of Superman just for a couple of days. And he never finished it, never completed it. For, like, the final climactic battle, he had two, like, five-second shots of him fighting it out with uh, the, the arch villain or whatever. And just, it never, they never got around to finishing it. And, gee, you know, um, 20 years went by. He grew up to become a person who did special effects for TV ads. He had to learn how to use, excuse me, learn how to use some new software and stuff. And he thought, you know what, I'm going to pull out that old footage and I'm going to doctor it up with, with all these modern-day computer graphics. Now, keep in mind, at this point, it's like 1997 when he's saying that. He then spent, like, the next two and a half years working away on this thing. He threw in, like, something like 130 special effects shots into, like, a 12-minute movie and just really went to town. I mean, um, took some really grainy, ugly footage, dressed it up with beautiful computer graphics, and then made that look grainy so that it would match the, uh, the Super 8 footage. And, and created this thing, uh, Superman, the, the Super 8 movie. So when he finally put this thing online, it was like an instant hit. And this is like before YouTube, this is before viral videos and such. And it became this thing where it was being downloaded nearly 4,000 times a day, which back then, that's like a massive, massive knockout hit um, because there was no video on the Internet at the time. So for some, you know, 4,000 people would be downloading a day. It's just like runaway success. And it was a big enough deal that DC Comics got in touch with him within a week with a big letter from their lawyer saying, get that thing offline right now. It's a big old cease and desist letter. So we did. I mean, you know, as he says in the book, you know, it was me versus a wall of cash. There was no way I was going to, you know, do anything but say, yep, you bet. It's going offline right now. So fast forward all these years later, he went off and made some Star Wars movies that, uh, fan films that did pretty well, um, and he, he did them with some of the folks that he worked with. They do a lot of um, political commercials because uh, they live up in New Hampshire, and that's one of the big primary states and stuff. So every couple of years, it, it becomes like kind of their bread and butter for what they do. So they made like some political, uh, uh, like a parody of those sorts of ads and stuff like, you know, say no to this and that kind of thing. And that did apparently uh, pretty well at one of the first Star Wars fan film festival thingies. Um, but anyway, losing track of the story. Fast forward to now, he's now made a 20-minute movie called Star Ranger 7, which is going to go online, like, any day now. They're just cool. finishing up the last bits of sound. Um, I saw the trailer of it, of it at the week, over the weekend. We showed it at, um, at one of the fan film programs. And uh, it, it looks really cool. I mean, the kind of things that, that you I mean, yeah, he has some professional gear which he works with, but overall, I mean, just the fact that somebody can make this big, epic-looking thing for you know, comparatively next to nothing is really cool. Absolutely. And when that goes online, as part of the website, they're going to have the Superman movie as well. So it's kind of like, because they, I mean, you know, they, they know people are going to want to come see it. They're not making any money off of any of these things. They're, they're you know, it's all free for people to watch and stuff. So uh, it's kind of a nice thing. He finally now gets to um, show a Superman movie again online now that the mood has changed over at DC towards these things. Excellent. He did some talking with, with Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, at some point, he says, wanted to uh, try and put together almost like a, a Batman version of the Star Wars fan film contest that they hold every year. And they basically, he talked with that with Warner in D.C., and he says they um, basically realized that there just weren't enough uh, Batman movies being made uh, to be able to do that. So he had a bit to do with that. I think D.C. themselves were leaning towards it. I mean, last year, last spring, I talked to uh, Paul Levitz, who's the, the president and publisher of DC at the New York Comic Con, and, and, you know, I got a quote from him direct saying, you know, we, we have a problem with people making money off of our, our characters. We have no problem with people who use our characters if they're not going to make money out of it. So that was, you know, basically saying it's okay. You can play with our billion-dollar franchises if you don't try and make money. Now, I'm so proud of myself and patting myself on the back. Look at this amazing quote I got. And then a couple of months later, I discovered that he had been um, part of a panel that was run by a guy up at MIT, Henry Jenkins, who is pretty much the number one scholar in the entire world on the topics of fandom. I mean, they, I, the kinds of stuff that he does is, like, far too complicated for me to do a decent summary of um, or to try and explain, because I know I would botch it up. But it basically, he, he, if it comes to fandom, this guy knows all about it, and he's done all these symposiums and stuff up there at MIT and this and that. And 
Uh, Levitz was part of one of them, so I'm sure if he wasn't already leaning towards that kind of ideology before he went up there and was part of it, he must probably definitely uh, had the Kool-Aid once he was there. <laughs> So it really had nothing to do with me asking him that, and I'm sure it had a lot to do with Henry Jenkins. So, um, But, yeah, if you really want to have your mind blown as to what the academic world thinks about uh, us geeking out and talking about uh, Battlestar Galactica and the office and stuff, go go searching for some of uh, Henry Jenkins' writings, and, and you will get a very different vision of <laughs> of people hanging out and shooting the ball. Do a little, do a little, better, bit, do a little bit better about ourselves. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're you know, they, well, it, it, it's really interesting how he, they, the academic world parses what we do, and they kind of take it apart and, and, and put it back together. You know, like that, that step of removal and looking at the psychology of fandom and this and that. I mean, he has a really interesting book, which you can find at any Barnes & Noble, called Convergence Culture, um, which has a bunch of different chapters. Each one's about a different topic, and he does have a fan film chapter in there. But he also has like chapters about um, American Idol and, and Survivor hmm. and this and that. And he looks at these different you know mass media um, phenomena and, and talks kind of about what they all lead towards, which is where that whole convergence bit comes in. Whatever happened to that dude? That uh, the guy that was into Dexter? It just happened like a month ago or or so. That oh, yeah, supposedly Mark killed. Him. Yeah, talk about yeah, that. If you, how much do you know about that? Mitchell. Wow. Um, well, tomorrow, and now we're screwing it all up for anybody who's listening to the podcast, tomorrow he goes in front of a judge, um, tomorrow being November 26th. There you go. Uh, he is said, because it is all, you know, everyone's innocent until proven guilty. Exactly. He is said to have killed somebody in early October, like around October 10th or so, um, living out the plot of a short horror movie that he made in early September, where the plot of this movie was that there's some guy who wants to write a screenplay, and, and he ties somebody up in his garage and slices him up into bits and pieces after torturing him for to get, like, his Facebook passwords and credit card passwords and all those kinds of things. And then apparently it would appear that um, he did this, that he, uh, that he lured somebody uh, from a dating site to this garage and, and uh, supposedly uh, stunned them with like a, a, a like a kind of like a taser rod type thing, and then did this. Now the police can't find the body; <laughs> they've not found it. And meanwhile, on the news last night, they were talking. This all happened up in Edmonton. On the news last night, they were uh, talking about how some meteor exploded over Edmonton, and now like half the city is like walking around in the fields outside the city trying to find chunks of meteor because, you know, it's like collector's items or to put on eBay or something. And, you know, I, I, the first thing I, my wife and I both turned to each other and said, you know what, they're going to find pieces of that guy. <laughs> it's to think, but anyway. Um, because he was a Dexter fan, too, and didn't, if I re- remember from the original pilot of Dexter, yeah. didn't he cut up the body somehow or, or did or maybe took all the fluids out. Maybe I'm thinking that was the that was the serial killer that he was admiring actually because right. he's a crime scene guy by day, and he showed up on the scene and he said the bodies were completely drained of blood. Yeah, there was not one drop. So I don't, I don't know if he was trying to do that or whatever, but yeah, I'm a big Dexter fan. So he's a serial killer that, that that goes after serial killers, right? So he's really technically exactly. he a serial killer. Bad guys. Yeah, he goes after the bad guys. Yeah. And he actually made a quality, or I mean, it's not out yet, and I doubt it's ever going to be out, but the fan film he was making wasn't, you know, yeah, it was just like, some uh, flim flam thing. Supposedly he spent $60,000 on it, and uh, it was never completed, and, uh, you know, I guess he just moved on to other things. He had a script which he had started getting financing for that he was going to turn into a movie, he hoped, and, um, called Day Traders, I think it was called. Okay. Yeah, bottom line. Hopefully he didn't do it. Hopefully there's, like, a lot of people on the Star Wars, like, on on the Force.net, there's a fan film forum where uh, a lot of fan film guys hang out. And initially all these people knew him from his postings and kind of said, oh, you know, this is probably just him pulling some elaborate publicity stunt or whatever. And then once it started coming out of, like, you know, the news stories started coming out of, like, the Canadian media, it's like, oh, no, this really isn't. It's it's happening. Well, I'm sure you do they... A search, there's a blog called um, Last Link on the Left, and they have just 
insane amounts of information. They're like they have found out anything you could possibly find out about this thing. So if you if you're dying to find out about Mark Bush, check it out. That, that is the resource. I'm sure they have uh, DNA and everything. They swept the garage and everything. I'm sure they know he's dead. They just don't know where the body is, but I'm speculating. Yeah, the, the police say that they, even though there's no body, they, they have enough evidence yeah. they claim to be able to, say, you know, get first-degree murder on it. And he wasn't, very, think would be kind of tough. he wasn't very bright about it because he tried to do the same thing to another bloat who he uh, coursed to his garage, but this guy got away. Well, yeah, I mean... And so he does it again. <laughs> of course he's going to get caught. <laughs> If he did it, and, I mean, if, if he did it, right, right. If he did, you know, uh, we gotta. If he didn't, we gotta have him on the show, <laughs> dude. If he didn't do it, you definitely gotta get him on your show. If the glove does not fit, you must quit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I mean, there's this guy out in Iowa who they interviewed in the Canadian media, who like wrote half the story with him and stuff, and. I mean, on, on, a, on the fan film side of things, I mean, I would love to get my hands on the script and just read it. Cause yeah. It sounded like the little bit that they had that they mentioned in the article. That it sounded like a good story. Yeah. Well, I hope, like you said, he does get off and we can have him on. Or we'll talk to him from Rikers, one or the other. Which proves my theory that all fan film directors have homicidal tendencies. <laughs> Great. And fans. That's right. We're all thinking about the big kill. So we said with a, a hint of pride there, I know. <laughs> uh, maybe no <laughs> but you yeah, so you know that that was and that was one of the tricky things too because I mean obviously we're you know I'm interested in getting some attention from my book and you know the, the you know people at my job are like dude you hear about this guy you should tell him like contact the media and tell them about your book and I'm like nah you know there, there's ways that you want to get the word out about your book and then there's ways you just kind of don't want to be involved yeah. and that's one of the ways you just yeah like, you know. I don't blame you. Endorsed by Mark Switchell. It's got to be good. <laughs> <laughs> buy it or else. Well, I'm going to stab him the crap out of somebody. You can find me reading Homemade Hollywood. Yeah, there you go. Man. On yeah. newsstands now. It's, it, you know, but the, the thing about that, though, is that, the, like, the story was out for about a week, week and a half, and, and I've been writing it up on, on Fan of Cinema today a couple of times. Like, you know, the follow up stories and this and that. And then all of a sudden, this site called I Am Bored, which I never heard of before, um, picked it up. And, like, this thing went viral. And, like, I got thousands and thousands of hits on that story for, like, two, three days. It's like, you know, like 2,000 hits alone on that one article. Wow. It, it was bizarre. And I'd never even heard of this site. And it's basically exactly what you would picture. It's like, I am bored, so I'll go to I Am Bored and find something interesting to see on the net. And it's, you know, it's, a lot of it's very amusing, but it's, it's kind of like a, a dig type site. But you know, it just goes to show you just how much stuff is out there that you don't even know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you just picked up and, like, bam, just, ever since then, I mean, I, I liked that. I mean, a lot of, I picked up a lot of permanent readers, I think, out of that, because my, uh, my readership is just kind of doubled as a result, thank God. I know, I wanted to mention real quick, I thought it was funny. And uh, not that I'm big friends with him or anything, but I was I was on your um, blog tonight, and on your release of your of your book, uh, there was like I don't know seven or eight replies, and they're all saying congratulations, Clive. Congratulations, Clive. When do I get my copy? Congratulations. Let's go to Chris R. Notarelli, who goes, I'm a book. His pictures on the front cover, which I didn't even know it was him until. This comment. I'm a book. Woohoo. Look at that cover. So, of course, Chris puts a comment about himself. <laughs> he doesn't say, Congratulations. Nothing. I was saying, That you know what? is Chris. Chris. This yeah. Chris, Chris, man. It's like, fan films draw so many kinds of people from, from blatant self promoters to, to homicidal maniacs. Yeah. Um, you know, and and that's part of what makes it so cool. When we did the the panel that that uh, Will and I, when we did the panel at New York Comic Con, I mean, I've never met any of the people on it face to face previously, except for um, uh, Dan, the guy who did the Iron Fist movie. Right. Uh -huh. On one hand, it was awkward because everybody was so different, but on the other hand, it really was a great representation of what everybody got out of fan films. They were all so different, had such a different take on it. Um, and, right. and Chris, was, you know, for all of his butting in and, and incessantly making jokes and interrupting everybody, you know, I mean, that, that's part of what he does, and, that, and that's cool, you know. I mean, yeah, absolutely, that's, that's 
what you expect from the guy. You get what you would, you know, you get what you want out of that. Yeah. His, his message board comments, just the things he gets into, just fascinates me. <laughs> just the shit that he, it's like. It's like your book. I, I can't. One is great. I can't move my eyes. I must read everything that he has to say and all the people that are commenting. And it's funny as hell. You got to admire Chris, man. He just doesn't care. He'll just speak his mind. He yeah. doesn't care. Good. So, we, we, you know that's and that's what fan films, you know, in a big way are. I mean, they're an opportunity for fans to to say exactly what they think without it having to go through any legislative or, you know, writing a letter to the editor and hoping that it gets right. in or whatever. You say what you want, and there it is for the whole world to see yeah. is exactly what you intended. And that's that's what's so great about it. It's a really organic fan experience. Yeah, that's a good way to look up, I would guess, Chris, unless you have anything. I'm all set. Let me check real quick down here. I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. Oh, yeah. Let me, uh, this is a final question on my behalf. Um, this uh, New York Comic Con that's coming up, is there going to be a, another panel? That is under discussion. I've gotten okay. in touch with them, talking with them about it. They're moderately interested. Uh, the people who said yes to the panel last year are not there. It's new people. Uh, a matter of, of reintroducing them to the concept and, and sending them a nice photo of, of the huge crowd that we got, saying, hey, this could be uh, yours. Hopefully it will happen. Any any ideas for uh, any guests on the panel? Uh, Chris has already said yeah. Okay. Because you know, um, I, I mean, there there nobody entertains a, a crowd like Chris. So. <laughs> it's very true. Um, Mark Kimball, the guy behind the the Superman movie, he has okay. given it a fairly strong tentative yeah. Um, Dan Galliardi is, you know, I, last year he barely got an opportunity to say anything, so I'm, I'm going to ask him some questions, I think. And uh, and his students, he and his students are working away on a new movie. He won't tell me what it is. Oh, cool. So we'll, I'm sure he'll we'll have to have him on again. And we'll I, I don't know where it's going to go from there, so I might be asking you, Will. You know, don't know yet. Um, a lot of it has to do with, A, whether they say yes or not. Yeah. Uh, and, B, I, I know one thing is that it's got to be a smaller panel than last year because last year it was like an overabundance of riches. I mean, because we, we had me, Will, Chris, Dan Galliardi, um, let's see, Dan Poole. Uh, mm -hmm. We had Adam from theforce.net. Right. Uh, am I forgetting? I, I think that's everybody. Yeah. I think that's everybody, yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's like five, six people right there. And it was, I thought that we were going to have. 90 minutes to two hours because that way everyone could show their clips and, and chat and it turned out we had 60 minutes and we had way too many of us so yeah I, I think it was like six of us in the end so but your stuff kept crapping out right the lights and uh well we couldn't turn off the lights. Yeah. the sound was too low and you know i mean but yeah it, th th that said our crowd only got bigger as we went along i yeah. mean mm -hmm. We started, I mean, the photo that, that's up on Fan Cinema today was, like, taken 10 minutes into the program. There's, like, 90 people visible in that photo, which isn't even the whole audience. And by the end of it, I mean, it was it was wall-to-wall, -wall, standing room only. So, uh, I mean, we we easily had at least 200 folks in there. <laughs> so, it, it, Me and Chris were kind of turning to each other, like, there's so many people coming in here. <laughs> I know. We, we, it, I, other things were letting out, and people just started coming in, which was, which was great. I mean, maybe... You know, we were we were halfway through what their their first choice was, but bottom line, they they came in, they were interested in fan films, they wanted to find out what these people had to say. I, it was a great thing. So, you know, we want hopefully we'll have the opportunity to uh, expand on that um, this year in February when the next New York Comic Con takes place. Yeah, right. That'd be awesome. Let, let's put a fork in it. Okay, okay let's, let's do that. All right. It was a good time. It was great. It was great talking to you again, man. I, it, always a pleasure, dude. And I'll be stealing. Gotta, I mean, even if it's not necessarily doing a panel or whatever, or maybe we, we can meet up sometime at a convention or, or something and, uh, you know, sure. shoot the shit. Well, you know, Long Island, you know, I'm here, you're here. We uh -huh. now have the, the official highest concentration of fan film journalists on the planet. <laughs> right here in Long Island. Because there you go, man. What, five of us? <laughs> I know. Huge group. Woo. And then there's little old me way over here. And, and you're in New York State, too. So yeah. State highest concentration. Okay, there we go. We, we can wipe that circle. Why not? <laughs> All right. Thanks. 
Hey, guys, have a happy holiday. Have a good Thanksgiving. You too, buddy. If, if you celebrate that sort of thing. I guess we all do, right? Yeah. Okay. A turkey's water? Yeah. All right. All for it. Eat lots, drink lots. Yes. Make love lots. Sleep I don't lots. know. What's that? Sleep lots. Yes. That too. Some action there. All right, gentlemen. I'm going to let my dogs out and crash. Have a good one, man. Yeah, you too. All right. Okay, good having you on, man. Uh, my pleasure. Take, Take care. care. Best of luck with the book, and uh, you can pick that up. Can you, you want to give a quick plug? You can pick up Homemade Hollywood at any major bookstore or online at Amazon, BarnesNoble.com, all those good places. Rolling out throughout December, so if you don't see it on your favorite website or in your favorite bookstore, just ask, and they're either getting it or it's in the back room, and they will get it for you. Either way, totally worth the read. 308 pages for less than 20 bucks. It's awesome. So, and it's not only me saying that. A whole bunch of websites you never heard of also said that. So, yay. I also, I, I read my advanced copy, and I love that I still have to put my review up. So, look for that sometime soon. Awesome. Thank and you. I did. At Comic Book Thin. Yeah, he did his. I rock. Yeah, yes. you're, you're quoted on my website. Isn't Thank it? you. Mr. Mosier of the bin. With the most cliche quotes <laughs> I could have put in the article. Oh, well. That's why you're the writer of the book and I'm just and me. Was, uh, you know, I couldn't put it down. That's great. Yeah. I mean, you know, I couldn't ask for better than that, man. Yeah, it was I'm true. Grateful. Yeah, it was true. But what, the wife drove to Ohio and I read. Worked out good. All right. Good night, everybody. All right. Good night.